are at the in Monaco and they've already started putting the grandstands out pretty early to be honest usually they do it a bit later and I don't know with COVID restrictions if they're going to be able to fill these out but yeah pretty cool to see them already up we are in my Porsche Turbo which is relevant because today we are going to be testing the brand new Ferrari Roma which happens to be right behind me just as we speak we are just going to a spot where we're going to be able to switch driving but today testing that Roma and I've been waiting for this for a while because I've heard many many good things about that car and the reason I'm in my Turbo is because happy coincidence it happens to be one of the biggest competitors of the new Ferrari Roma so I thought it'd be kind of fun to hop straight from the driver's seat of my Turbo S into the driver's seat of the Roma to be able to compare directly the two cars now is a whole new kind of uh, yeah language both in terms of design but also driving experience for Ferrari that they've gone after with the Roma so it's gonna be completely new completely different to my Ferrari 430 Scuderia of course and I'm really excited to try it out and of course compare it to my turbo right here we are then we've got the 991.2 turbo s right here now this isn't the direct competition of the Roma which is here how beautiful we've set it all nice and uh, pretty with the background for you guys it isn't the direct competition because technically the 992 would be but it's not far off so i've literally just hopped out of this and we're going to take a look at the roma both cars are pretty stunning looking but this is just beautiful the class of this car especially in this this is tdf blue gorgeous color works really well with the silver rims and the silver brake cap it is a whole new kind of platform now it does share its uh, wheelbase with the portofino but apart from that it is basically all new 620 horsepower from a twin turbocharged 3.9 liter v8 and what a good looking car so this is more in competition with, let's say the turbo uh, maybe amg gt aston martin db11 those kinds of cars there have been a lot of people commenting about the look saying that it is uh, you know a bit like the aston by ferrari but i think it has its own character it has its own look and uh, really classy it kind of brings out that kind of classic italian um you know classic sports car so i really really like it i love the way they've integrated these kind of old school looks like the front grille right here and it's got a little bit of uh, monza which is the you know multi-million pound hypercar a single or double seater no windscreen hypercar in the lights and also in kind of the shape and the angle of this front grille so really good looking from the front i find and from the rear they've done a really good job with the lights so the lights are this very kind of futuristic uh, 3d shape uh, lights in the back here which really add a whole dynamic to the car you've got the classic ferrari quad exhausts and yeah i mean it's really interesting to see kind of the the direction a design wise of the x here but also design wise of the interior because i think there's a lot in this car which is basically a hint as to what will be coming from ferrari in the future so yeah it's kind of a opening the door for a new wave of design and i find it really exciting so when you hop in the first thing you notice is just how modern this interior is you know a lot of people who were saying that this was just a coupe portofino the interior completely shows that it is not it is uh, completely different and they really reimagined the car uh, quite a bit we thought there would maybe be the v6 hybrid in this car when they first announced it a lot of people were speculating that but we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for that but it does so share that familiar v8 that you see in the lineup of ferraris quite a bit but the interior really shows um you know the future design of the ferrari range it reminds me a lot of the sf90 which we previously did a video on it has the exact same screen in front of you here which you can control and have you know your sat nav you can have also dual cockpit kind of aspect to it so you've got this line which goes all the way around the driver and makes you really feel like you're in your cockpit but then the same thing for the passenger see this line continues around here and it really gives you a feeling of being in your own space when you're the passenger and the passengers can also have this one doesn't have a spec but a passenger display here so you're really kind of in your standalone area which is quite nice now this is a plus two not a two plus two you've got two very very modest seats in the back which again is kind of like in my 911 they are a bit bigger in the 911 but ferrari aren't trying to pretend like they're not they know that they are very to short distance seats or even just storage so that makes it pretty practical and then you've got that aspect of uh, you know respecting and hinting towards ferrari's past in the design like we saw outside on the front with things such as the gear selector controller for the eight speed dct gearbox so you got buttons like automatic manual reverse and launch control all done in this makeshift kind of gated gearbox design 
very very nice very classy touch so it's very modern it's got all the latest technology but it doesn't feel um, you know uncomfortable or too different it feels familiar still and they've just added a few things that we'll be seeing like for example this design right here I think will be coming throughout all the Ferrari range in the very near future the dash I think that's something we'll be seeing a lot more this dual cockpit look I think this screen and just little details like buttons now instead of door handles on the interior so you press a button to open and close the door and I think that will be coming through on a lot of Ferraris everything you touch also is touchscreen basically so even the buttons for the light everything is all touchscreen but what I really want to know is how this thing drives and how it compares to my Turbo S right you hop in and even the engine start button Oh, hello. Uh, even that is touchscreen. So you've still got the traditional indicators on the steering wheel, but they've changed this actually where you can see you can do it from behind as well. Um, so you can just hit down like that and then hit back up to cancel it. So that's quite nice. All right, we're going to start a comfort mode and automatic because I want to see what that's like. So you hit the right paddle to go into first gear. And if there's no one coming, off we go. So you've got a bit more noise already, just even in normal mode from the get-go than you do in the 911. That you can notice straight away, right? Let's put the air conditioning on. It's a very usable interface, I feel. Right, so we're in automatic. Changes up to third gear at under 40 kilometers an hour. Suspension is, I've just driven it for a little bit right now, but suspension is uh, pretty compliant, more so than in the 911. It's one of the downfalls of the 911 is the suspension is always fairly stiff and then in a sports plus mode it's like a skateboard but even in the normal mode in the 911 the suspension is is, is pretty stiff so you come down here to this very cool uh, gear selector area that we talked about before which uh, looks very cool go into manual mode whacked into sport on the manatino which is still a physical switch with um, kind of digital uh, colors around it but it is a physical switch which is quite nice and then you can feel the 620 horsepower oh god it's brutal it is brutal not 60 in 3.2 seconds in this which is slower than the turbo s which is 2.8 but the turbo s with the four wheel drive just pins it and is one of the fastest accelerating cars yeah in the world so that is particularly impressive but you do have almost a central driving position but the rear feels pretty light when you put your foot down look see a little bit of slip as soon as you put your foot down and just coming out of corners when you're in race mode where it obviously lightens the effects of the traction control on the car stiffens everything up so now all of a sudden that compliance suspension is a little bit higher harder and the gearbox is it so when you come out of a corner, you can definitely feel the rear end getting a little bit light and a little bit swirmy. But the grip around the front end is pretty impressive for a GT car. I mean, it's nothing you can compare to the more hardcore mid-engine Ferraris. But for a car that in automatic um, and you know normal mode can just crunch miles, it is pretty impressive, very impressive in fact. I mean, the fact that this like, type of car the turbo s the vantages but especially this and the turbo s i would say how they can switch characters and have such a broad uh, reach of abilities is unbelievable now the visibility is very good in this car you've got these big rear uh, rear view mirrors um side view mirrors rear view mirrors side view mirrors I completely forgot it. right one last proper acceleration Certain people prefer having a much more open cockpit, and if that's the case, uh, this isn't the car for you. But I personally think it's really cool the way every, each person has their own personal space and the way it kind of makes you feel a part of the car. Um, now.